Hi there, these comments are for H and I am Michael from OTC Online TOEFLCourse.com. You're one of my TOEFL speaking boot camp course students, and I'm getting ready to listen to it. I think this is like integrated speaking task number four, right? So listening, speaking, academic. And uh, I also, let me get them ready right here. Where is it? Okay, right here. Let's get to the integrated speaking rubrics. So, so far over the month, I mean, your speaking is absolutely incredible. So you're consistently scoring uh, pretty much between 3.5 and 4, right? So let's see how you did on this one. I'm going to go ahead and listen to the whole thing one time without making any comments at all. Here we go. Begin speaking after the beep. Okay, here we go. The professor in the lecture introduces the idea about the special adaptations that enable some animals in the deep ocean to survive. Okay. To begin with, the professor mentions that there are two types of special adaptations. The first one is the body feature that allows the animal to eat a prey that is larger than itself. For example, the eel. It has a large mouth and a large stomach, and thus it enables it to eat the prey that is larger like than the word itself. Does. Good transition it gives word. it a bigger advantage because this will give it a larger nutrition because the prey is larger. Second type of adaptation is the ability to generate light and this helps it capture food. An example is the anglerfish, which has a light that is close to its mouth. The fish gets attracted to the light, and this enables the anglerfish to eat the fish. Yes, 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 and more yes. Wow, my goodness. So, topic development, I have zero comments. Very, very good, right? Accurate, complete, well-connected, very nice. Deliver your speech generally clear. Are you kidding me? It's very clear. It's higher than four. Your delivery is native speaker like. So, language use did not notice any grammar problems, no vocabulary issues. This is very good. Uh, I'm going to put you right around four, believe it or not. My goodness. I'm going to put you at 4.0 out of four. Uh, I'm going to give you 30 points out of 30 on this, so let's listen to it one more time and see if I have any reason to go lower than that. Begin speaking after the beep. Let's listen to the introduction The first. professor in the lecture introduces the idea about the special adaptations that enable some animals in the deep ocean to survive. Good. I like that topic statement. It kind of gives the purpose of the lecture. To begin with, the professor mentions that there are two types of special adaptations. Again, that's a very good leading or forecast sentence. There's two types of adaptations or two types of fish. So that helps prepare for the first example and the second example, and that allows you to have a coherent expression of ideas. The first one is the body feature that allows the animal to eat a prey that is larger than itself. For example, the eel. It has a large mouth and a large stomach, and thus it enables it to eat the prey that is larger than itself. It gives it a bigger advantage because okay. this will give it a larger nutrition because the prey is larger. A little bit of pacing issues in there, but I don't think it's enough to bring your score below four. So maybe a little bit from about 35 to 40 seconds. Second type of adaptation is... The second type of adaptation, according to the professor, is... So especially when you move to that second support point, you need to include a voice marker there so we still know that this is a summary. The ability to generate light and... This helps it capture food. An example is the anglerfish. And this helps the animal, maybe, instead of it, this helps the animal to capture food. So show you have a little bit better vocabulary than just it. Which has a light that is close to its mouth. The fish gets attracted to the light, and this enables the anglerfish to eat the fish. Wow, I like how you get to the fish at the end and you lower your tone there because you're finished with your response. Very natural. Uh, sounding intonation here. Wow. Yes. I think you got a great one here, right? 
So general description, let's look at it. The response fulfills demands of the task. Exactly you did this. With at most minor lapses, you have no lapses in completeness. It is highly intelligible and exhibits sustained coherent discourse. Yes, you are highly intelligible. I do not say that about many students. And anybody on YouTube who, who follows my channel, you know I don't say a lot about that. It says exhibit sustained coherent discourse. Yes, sustained means you're speaking quickly without too many pauses or disruptions. Coherent means there's a very nice connection of ideas between the introduction, then the first uh, support point, and the second support point. Delivery here, if we look more specific, speech is generally clear. You're better than that. Your speech is highly clear, very clear. You have minor lapses or minor difficulty with pronunciation or intonation. I don't think there's really any minor problems here. Pace may vary at times as a speaker. Yeah, you can say that. Overall intelligibility remains high. Perfect. Response demonstrates good control of basic and complex grammar. Uh, you did. You did an excellent job with that. I don't see you just speaking with short, simple sentences. Contains generally effective word choice. Exactly. Uh, though you have some minor or systematic errors or imprecise use may be noticeable. I don't even think you have any of that. So topic development response presents a clear progression of ideas and conveys the relevant information required by the task. It includes appropriate detail, though it may have minor errors, minor omissions. No, you don't have any errors and you haven't omitted anything. So maybe we can argue here that your response is higher than a four. Wow. So good job on that. Now, do you feel confident? You gotta believe in yourself. I believe in you. I know when you take the TOEFL test, just relax. Don't think about it too much beforehand. Just do what you've been doing on your practice test and you will score higher than 26. It is my hope, my prayer. I hope that you can score between 29 and 30. I think that's entirely possible based on your current English proficiency level. Right? You can do this.